Amen. Once again po, good morning! Good morning! Amen. So, minaantok na po ba tayo? <laughs> Or we are just so touched doon sa ating uh, magkapuri sa Panginoon, ano? It is really indeed good and wonderful and beautiful to worship the Lord. Amen po ba? Napakasarap po na napapurihan natin ang Panginoon sa, with the congregation, no? Kaya uh, we continue to encourage na wag po nating i-miss yung mga ganitong opportunity that uh, we are really able to worship the Lord ng ganitong freedom na mayroon tayo in this place. So not only every Sunday but also on Tuesday if we have the avenue in between the week na mapupulihan po natin ng Panginoon, you are very welcome po on Tuesday as well, Tuesday night. So we are spending one and almost 1 and 30 minutes no? from 8.15 then we end at 9.45. So I don't want to ask that if you are free <laughs> because you have to make yourselves available para sa Panginoon. Amen po ba? So praise the Lord. So we don't have a visitors, right? Wala po. Amen. So glory to God. Let us now proceed to the message. So God is good. And all the time. Amen. Praise God. So our introduction this morning is a kind of making or framing the message that we are going to hear this morning. So it's just like of a foundation to the whole message that we are going to hear this morning. Now the word repentance, let me go straight to the very central of our message. The word repentance, as we know, as we understand, means what? Repentance in the Bible or in the Greek equivalent is metanoia. And it means it's a change of one's mind. So kung titignan nyo po yung inyong mga Bible that has a Greek equivalent, may ikita nyo doon that word metanoia in the New Testament. Okay, it, is, it means it's a change of mind. It's a change of direction. That's what repentance means. But it has a different meaning when it comes to the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament, as we know, was written not in Greek, but in Hebrew. Okay, so in the Bible, many occasions were mentioned that God had repented. Diba? So if we say that the definition of repentance means a change of direction, but in the Bible, there are so many occasions where it is mentioned that God repented. And how are we going to understand this has a big impact in a way that we come to the Lord. In a way that we understand Him, it is important that we have to understand this word repentance when it comes to Him. That when the Bible described that God repented, or God repent. So I'm going to show you some of the passages in the Bible that shows that God had repented. So if you have in Genesis chapter 6, in verse 6, it says there that it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So kung titignan po natin doon, in a plain word, God had repented that He had created the human beings. Also in 1 Samuel, where God had repented that He had made Saul as a king. Diba? If you are going to recall that narrative, that, that event, that it says there in 1 Samuel chapter 15, in verse 10, It repented the Lord that I have set up Saul to be a king. So again, the word repentance. And another one. In Jonah chapter 3 verse 10, diba, you remember that God had promised that He is going to destroy diba, this whole people in Nineveh. And yet we can see that God had repented that He will not do it. Diba? 
because he has now this compassion okay not to destroy the Nineveh because we know the story diba? all the nations had repented before the Lord and they asked for forgiveness maybe God would spare them maybe God would have mercy on them and yes as we can see in the last verse that God promised that he is not going to destroy the Nineveh so in all of this text look at this on the surface it says that God had repented it means he changed his mind but in the Old Testament that that is not what it means because here we can see that really ibig sabihin pala Pastor Abel that God really can change diba ito yung nakikita natin in this sore pace because the word of God the Bible says that God had repented now many of the theologians would say that whenever the word repented addressed to God, that is what they called anthropomorphic. So it is a kind of a figure of speech or a metaphor. So ang ibig po sabihin nito is putting a human characteristic or a traits or a feelings or a meaning or emotions to a non-human being. So, ibig sabihin po that when the Bible in the Old Testament says that God had repented, it speaks of a human term. Okay? So, ibig sabihin lang po niyan that God was sorry, that God has regret, that He had created human being. Parang ganun po ibig sabihin. That he had promised that he would destroy the Nineveh. Okay? So it's, it speaks of a human term. But let me clear this, brothers and sisters. I don't mean that God doesn't have a feelings. Because we, we understand, we, we could learn that in the Bible, there are many times that God had feelings. Amen? There are many occasions and in fact, he has a different many feelings. Okay? But those feelings were unchangeable. Okay po ba? It's not the same like the human feelings. Because God's feeling, of course, will be according to his nature. And since God is unchanging, and so his feelings is unchanging. Diba? For us human beings, our feelings is reactive. Okay? We re our feelings based on the situations that we react on it. But God doesn't react on those. Because God's feelings is proactive. So tayo po, diba? Kapag malungkot siyempre yung situations, palungkot din tayo. Diba? Yung iba lang talaga, malungkot ng situation, pero tumatawa-tawa pa rin. Diba? Tayo yun, no? Paiba-iba. But for God, it is proactive. His feelings is according to His nature, and that is also unchanging. So God experienced feelings as well. Diba? Katulad natin. And we can see that in many of the passages in the Bible. So when the Bible say that God repented, or I have mentioned this the last time. When we say that God had suffered, do we really think that really God would suffer? Diba? That God would be tired? Now, ayun po yung din describe of anthropomorphic. It speaks of a human condition that is what? That is going to be related to a non-human. Yung mga psychologists po dito, alam nila yun, ano? <laughs> okay? So those, do, wag yun na po masyadong intindihin yung technical na term. But this is how it speaks because this is very important in a foundation of understanding the message that we are going to hear this morning. 
So it speaks of a human turn. So why is that? Why is that to be so? Why is that that we are to describe God in a human terms? Well, brothers and sisters, because of our weaknesses, because of our limitations, that we cannot reach the heights of God. That's why God had to lower, not Him Himself, but He has to reveal Himself in a way that is intelligible. No, dapat maintindihan ng tao. In a way that is knowable to man. And that is how the way the author of the Bible put all of these words. Di ba nakita natin sa ating kanta kanina? That God had really has spread, that we are above the, the wings of an eagle, di ba? Like the wings of God. And if you're going to say, really, God has wings. That is how the way they use those terms. And even in the Bible, there are words that describe God in a human form. Form. Diba? So in Hebrews, diba may kita natin dito that it describes that God has having eyes na mayroon siyang mata. In second, in second Chronicles, diba? It says here that my God, may your eyes be open and your ears be attentive. So God has an eyes and an ears. And also in Deuteronomy chapter 5, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand. Again, it speaks of a human form. And an outstretched arm. So all of this that describe God in our human terms should not be understood in a literal way. In a, metaphys in a metaphysical way. Hindi po natin dapat intindihin ito in the plain words. Now, this is how it is. Because we are seeing God from below. Now, this is the perspective. When we see God from below, it means from here to up, this is the way we are describing Him. That's why we are seeing the author of the Bible saying that God has hands, has feet, has arms. Because this is the way we describe it. But the reality of this is what? Is seeing God from above. Now, this building doesn't look... This building is not the same as you look from under and from the top. That's the way it is. For the Bible, whenever it describes that God has those... Ibig sabihin po, we are looking God from below, from the under. But the reality of all of this is we have to see Him from above, from God's perspective. Okay? Nakakaintindihan po ba? So I hope this would help us to really understand whenever we come across with those questions as we study the Word of God. So let us all arise, brothers and sisters, Are we are going to read our text for today in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. In Matthew, chapter 4. And also in Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. It says here, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Let us jump to chapter 5, verse 3. It says here, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the reading of God's word. Let us pray. Dear God, we honor you and we praise you once again for just simply allowing us to be in your presence. 
and having this wonderful time of once again hearing your message, your word, O Lord. Father, it is our prayer that you will use the very text, the very event that we, in front of us that would enable us, O Lord, to see and understand and grasp the very message that you want us to hear today, personally, as a family, and as a church, as a community. Father, enable each and every one of us that we would be receptive of your word and prepare us, O Lord God, that we would obey it, that we could give glory to your name. Father, this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, it says here, from that time, Jesus began to preach. Diba? Sabi niya doon, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, a good student of the word of God would notice the first phrase from that time so what is that time so from that time brothers and sisters is the opening statement of Matthew that means he is referring to an event that took place before this time so ano po itong event nito? Last week we heard the message from Pastor Nick, di ba? In chapter 4 from verse 1. Okay? Up to verse 11. May kita natin doon. And we are in chapter 4 verse 17. It jumps a little, it jumps some few verses. So it says here from that Time. So, ano itong from that time na ito sa sinabi ni Matthew? So, this is the time between the Lord Jesus Christ baptism up to the time that He reached to Galilee and started to preach this message. Ayun pong ibig sabihin nun. But in Matthew, hindi po natin makikita yung talagang sequence of event. Kasi from here, from the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then it jumps now to Jesus is now in the Galilee. But before that, the book of John recorded. Because after the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ, di ba sino ba ang nagbaptize kay Jesus Christ? It was John the Baptist. Kaya in the book of John, in chapter 1, in verse 29, after the temptation, when he proclaimed, Behold! Diba? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That is after the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that event, the Lord Jesus Christ diba, went to the Passover in chapter 2 of John. And then in the book of, in the chapter 3, we can hear also, we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ is now having this conversation with Nicodemus. Okay? And we can also find out in chapter 4, diba, why he was speaking now to the Samaritan woman. Bakit? Because it says there in the same chapter that he left Judah. Diba? He left the Nazareth and he has to go to Galilee. Kaya sa verse 12 of chapter 4, when Jesus heard that John, si John the Baptist po ito, had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee, leaving Nazareth. So ibig sabihin, from here, he traveled. Now, he has to pass through Samaria, kaya po nakausap niya and namit niya yung babae before reaching to Galilee. So, ayun po yung sequence of event. Now, why is that now Matthew started the public ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ when he returned into Galilee? Why he didn't record those? Because brothers and sisters, since Matthew was a resident of Galilee. So, how the four gospel has been connected to one another for us to really see the whole picture of it. 
So that is why Matthew began recording the public ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ from Galilee. And ano po yung ginagawa ni Jesus Christ? In Galilee, it says here, He began to preach. What he was preaching? The word repentance. Sabi niya doon, repent. Now, we are going to notice that John the Baptist was preaching the same message in Matthew chapter 3 verse 2 diba? John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is near so the Lord Jesus Christ has the same message just like John the Baptist and what was the message that the Lord Jesus Christ told to the twelve disciples when God had sent them out. It's the same thing. They have to proclaim repentance. And when the Lord Jesus Christ, on the last moment before His ascension, diba, in the book of Luke, what were the message that He commissioned His people? That was also the same message. In Luke 24, 47, before his ascension, he said there to proclaim the repentance. Acts chapter 2, Peter was also preaching the same message. He is talking about repent. Diba? And be baptized. How about Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul had the same message both to the Jew and to the Gentiles that they may have come to repentance to God and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The same message that speaks of repentance. So this is very important for us to see that the message of the Lord Jesus Christ was central to repentance and why is that so brothers and sisters but before that what is repentance I have shared in the introduction that repentance is a change of heart it's a change of direction okay in the subject of sin now before, when we were uh, born, we are born sinner by nature. Okay, so by nature it means that we love to sin. Yung ang mga bata, you don't have to send them into the school to learn how to lie, how to have pride, paano kumain ng marami, Kasi pag binigyan mo talaga ng pagkain yan, continuous talaga yan. You really have to stop them. ba? Ganun po. Kaya yung mga anak natin nung baby, ang kukyot nila. So ganun po yun, ano? You don't have to really to teach them how to stop. Because if you have those food, talaga is magkukontinue, magkukontinue yun. Okay? You don't have to teach the child how to be deceitful. It is by nature it will come out because we are all born by sin or in sin. The kids doesn't need to learn in this school how to be selfish. <laughs> diba? So that is by nature. But when the Holy Spirit changed this heart, the moment, those times when the Holy Spirit has changed this heart, which the Bible called it repentance. Okay po? Yung nature natin, it only can change by the Holy Spirit. We don't have any capacity at all to change our own. Okay, that's why even though you strive so hard to change yourself, you won't be able to be changed unless the Holy Spirit 
have made a changes. It doesn't come from the inside. It has to be coming from the outside, outside of you, outside of us. So that is repentance. It's a change of heart. It's a change of direction. It's a change of mind. Now, ito po yung illustration that I wanted to share sa inyo. For us to really grasp, ano po ba yung repentance? Kanina sa mga song natin, we have those words that how God had turned us around. Diba? Those were related to the subject of repentance. Now, this is what it is. For example po, I am facing this I am facing this wall. Okay? Now, this wall is the word which I am living. And behind me, the pulpit, of course, would be God. Again, an illustration, a figure of speech. For example, this is God, and it is me, and this is the word which I am living. Okay, so whatever I am doing here, magbalibaligtad man ako dito, tumbling-tumbling man ako dito, things won't change in how God look at me. Ibig sabihin, God's wrath, the unchanging God's wrath was upon me. Okay? So, ano man ang gawin ko dito, in front of me, in my walk here, nothing won't change. His unchanging wrath was always upon me. And there is nothing that I can do to make those changes. Unless God moved me. Unless God touched me. Now, this is what this repentance looked like. Hindi po yung 360 degrees. Kasi kapag 360 degrees, <laughs> nakaharap pa rin ako dito. And hindi rin po yung pivot. Now, if you are a basketball player, si Brother Albert, mahilig mag-pivot ito eh. Kahit, mat- kahit na ganyan yung edad niya. <laughs> yung kaya yung tuhod niya, talagang ano, masakit. So, pag nagpa-pivot ka sa basketball, ito yung direction mo, ito yung ring. And when you do a pivot, you also make a turn. But you don't change your direction. You are going in the same directions. Now, some modern preachers would tell you about the Bible thing in our life. But that is not the way it is. Parang prosperity gospel. So this is how it is. A repentance, true repentance, is a 180 degrees turn. Okay. So if I will turn like this, this is the repentance. And where I am walking right now is towards who? Towards God. Now, behind me is the word. Now, there is no way, once again, that I will be back to this word because I am pacing right here. And God, unchanging pleasure of blessings was now upon me. Okay? And that is not also going to change. Okay? So I am now pacing here. Now, take notice who changed. Is it God chains or is it me? Para pong yung wind. Kapag yung hangin dito, ha, sarap ng hangin. Pag tumalik ko tayo, isipin, ah, sa likuran ko yung hangin. Hindi po. Yung hangin was the same. You just turn your back to that wind. So it is the same thing when we say that we repented. In God, we are just changing. We are just turning into another unchanging nature of God. Because God does not change. We human are. So God doesn't move. We are the one that move. Para po yung illustration of those pillars. So this is very important for us to really see the picture of it. When we repent, we simply move from one under unchanging attribute of God into another unchanging attribute of God. But God did not change. He remained the same. Amen po ba? So we say that the Lord Jesus Christ preached repentance, which means that God is calling His listeners to that time. He is calling His audience to repent for the kingdom of heaven is coming. Jesus wanted his people, 
Jesus wanted the sinners, He was calling the sinners to come to repentance. Because God knows that the kingdom is near. Well, brothers and sisters, in fact, the kingdom is here. Because what? Because Christ was there. Diba? Because he was, kingdom is someone that someone has to rule. And we say that the Lord Jesus Christ is a king, so he was there speaking with those people, and so the kingdom was there among them. It was near to them. Although it speaks of a future, but in essence, the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to them, and so the kingdom is there. And so the Lord Jesus Christ explained, ano ba yung repentance? Well, maybe John the Baptist was not able to to explain it, or maybe the, the author doesn't really record it in the beginning of their writings. But the Lord Jesus Christ explained repentance in connection to what? In connection to the kingdom of God. When we say kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of Christ, those were intangibly used in the gospel. But it only meant the same. It just only differs on the audience. Okay? So if Matthew audience is the Jews, he has to use the kingdom of heaven instead of kingdom of God. But though he used in many or in few occasions, he write also the kingdom of God to the book of Matthew. So in relation to the kingdom of heaven, what is the connection of this repentance that the Lord Jesus Christ were preaching? Because we are now coming to chapter 5 where we can see the sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ. Diba ang sabi niya in verse 3 of chapter 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, there is a four points that I wanted to share it with you in regards to true repentance. And I hope and I pray that as we go along, okay, you go through on this. You look unto yourselves and see for yourselves true repentance. This is really manifested in my life or not. Okay, so the first one is this. True repentance requires acknowledgement of our sin. Now, this is very important, brothers and sisters. We sinners should first acknowledge our own personal sinfulness. That we, by nature, and we voluntarily, and we, by our own will, disobey God with our own will with many of our decisions we have been disobeying and violating the law of God that is the beginning of repentance we have to acknowledge okay by our intellect into our mind yes that we are sinners it says here in Matthew that poor in spirit are blessed. Diva? The poor in spirit are blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Ibig sabihin po, they have been blessed by this privilege of the recipient of God's kingdom. If you are poor in spirit, then the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. But if you are not poor in spirit, there is no way that the kingdom of heaven will be for you. Ibig sabihin po, there is no other way for you and me to enter the kingdom of heaven except we are poor in spirit. That's the only way. Only the poor in spirit can enter the kingdom of heaven. It only belongs to them and no one else. That's the kingdom of heaven. It is belong to those poor in spirit. So if you are not one that is poor in spirit, then you are not welcome anymore. 
or you are, wel you are not welcome in heaven. Now, you might be thinking right now, Pastor Robert, what is poor in spirit? <laughs> Di ba? So, ibig sabihin po, it's very obvious that it is not about you are poor materially, okay, that you, don't have, that you don't have those bank accounts, you don't have cars, okay, because that doesn't, end, that doesn't count at all. But poor in spirit here means spiritual poverty, okay? It speaks of spiritual poverty. It means that, brothers and sisters, when we look into ourselves and evaluate our life in light of God, in light of His character, we would say that we are nothing. That we don't deserve His presence. That's what it means when we are through repenting. That we repent. We have to acknowledge our sin. That there is nothing in me. There is nothing in you that we could give God. And we can say to God, God, I deserve your presence. Brothers and sisters, at there is nothing at all. Even pagsamasamahin po natin lahat ng mabubuting gawa natin, not a single hint would deserve God's presence. It's a total bankruptcy. You have to really declare unto the Lord that there is nothing in you that God, that you would deserve His presence in your life. That is the true repentance. We have to acknowledge that we are spiritually poor. So all our efforts, our good works, the way we think it, all our religions, all our rituals, whatever worldview that you have, if you don't acknowledge first in your mind that you are a sinner, it says here that the kingdom of heaven is not belong to you. That should come first. That is the idea of true repentance. We have to completely remove ourselves, yung mga personal pride natin, yung confidence natin, into ourselves every time we approach God. There is no credit in everything that we do, in everything that we have. Kahit na po isama po niyo po yung inyong bank account, that doesn't count at all. So it removes, what is true repentance? It removes your personal reference. Kailangan pong maalis ang iyong pagtingin mo sa sarili mo when it comes to true repentance. All your abilities will be nothing before God. That is the beginning of true repentance. Repentance, But not only that we acknowledge our own sinfulness, that leads us to second point. And sabi dyan, true repentance requires sorrow over sin. So it is not only intellectual. It is not only that we understand that we are sinners. But it also includes our emotion. That we are sorrow over our sin. That we are grieving because of our sin. Because we know that we have violated God. Now, there are some people who grieve over sin. Why? Which is not a true repentance in what sense? Whenever they are afraid of what? Of dying. Whenever people are afraid of hell. Diba? Diba? So the question here is that how much do you hate your sin? How much do you hate your sin? Do you remember the tax collector and the Pharisees when they were both in the temple? Sabi ng Pharisee, it's good that I am not like this kind of person. But ano yung nakita natin dun sa tax collector? Ano ang sinabi niya doon? When he sorrow over her sin, over his sin, diba? he was standing at a distance. He cannot even lift up his eyes towards heaven. 
And sabi niya doon, God have mercy on me. I am a sinner. And while doing that, while he was having this sorrow over his sin, he was beating his chest. That he has to release this sorrow even in an external way, in a physical way. God, I'm sorry. I am a sinner. That is a true repentance. You sorrow over your sin. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. That godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation. It is a godly sorrow that brings repentance unto salvation. You know, sabi ko kanina, there are some sorrow that doesn't lead in the true repentance. When a person, when a human being, fear a punishment. You know po, many preachers would preach about death, about judgment, about hell, and could bring the people into their emotions and that could bring fear to them so that they would repent and usually, the people would react on that way. So, paano, bakit po sila nagre-repent? Because sila po ay natatakot into those punishment. That is not a true punishment. And that is not a true repentance at all. Fear doesn't bring true repentance to people. It doesn't work that way. Kapag hindi kayo nagsisi, diyan kayo mapupunta. ba? May video pa yun. Apoy-apoy. Yung mga tao nga, congregation, paano kayong gawin ko ngayon dito? No? Mga kapatid, sino man dito, hindi pa tumagap sa ngayon, ito, dito kayo mapupunta. Kikilabutan siguro kayo, no? And for sure, mayroong luluha-luha na dyan. Naintindihan po natin, sorrow over sin is not in that way that you bring fear to people because it doesn't give birth to true repentance. True repentance that leads to salvation and when, is when you realize your sinfulness. And after you realize your sinfulness into your mind, you are now bringing that emotion. So what happened in those moments, maybe you have experienced it, I believe, that really you were just crying all time on how the gravity of sin that you have violated the Lord. There were those times in isolations when we are alone that we just cry and cry because everything in your life stops and you are now focused and you are now dealing with the situations now that you are recalling your sin and you're saying, Lord, I'm really sorry. Diba po? So it's not the other way around that you preach hell and people will be scared. Brothers and sisters, you don't need even to repent in order for you to scare or to be afraid of hell. If you are just going outside, take a survey, ask people around, do you want to go to hell? Even without preaching repentance, they would say, they would tell you, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> diba? So it doesn't make any changes at all because no people would like, would want to go to hell. So true repentance, it means you are to be sorrow over your sin. With all your mind, with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, that you have to realize how much you have violated the Lord. So you grieve over it. Nasasaktan ka ibig sabihin because of everything that you have done. So that is the mark of true repentance. We acknowledge our sin. You know it well. You have to be aware of it. And at the same time, you grieve over your sin. You are to feel sad about it. You are not to take this for granted. 
di ba? But that is the two points. There is more. The third one. True repentance is turning away of your sin. So now that you know that you are sinners and that you grieve over it, and the next step for these brothers and sisters is what? Kanina sabi ko, when I was walking here towards this point, kahit magbalibalin tong ako dito, nothing would change. I will be in the same situations. I have to take some move. I have to turn away from this sin and towards God. That is true repentance. You have to turn away from sin with intention. Ibig sabihin po, with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and your mind, you are decided to really break away from that sin, to really stay away from that sin, to really cast that away from your life. And really, you have to turn your back and now face the Lord. That is true repentance. You have to turn away from your sin. Because you, you, cannot, you cannot be having a true repentance if you are still walking here and you're thinking that you are facing the Lord with all those sins. That cannot be. Diba? When we are facing the Lord, the narrow gate, you don't have those extra, extra baggage. You don't have those mga pangkamping na bag. When we come to the Lord and walk into those narrow gate, ibig sabihin po, ikaw lang po yun. Kaya po hindi wide gate. Yung wide gate, may mga bagabagahay pa tayo. But on that narrow gate, you and God alone. Naintindihan po natin. That is true repentance. It's turning away from sin and in order to serve God. You cannot serve God and you have those baggage with you. So for example, you desire to serve the Lord and you are in the praise and worship team or in any ministry that you are in, you cannot do that. You have to really turn away from that sin. Luke 18 verse 22. It's a good illustration of this point number three. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, diba? and you will have a treasure in heaven. Then what? Come, follow me. That is a kind of turning away from sin look like. And what is the response of this rich young ruler? Alam naman po natin, he cannot give it up. And God is saying, it's, it's not possible at all that you would follow me and you have those baggage. And so the guy was so sad, leaving God behind and again walked towards his way. So the way that God wants us to turn away from our sin, just like this rich young man ruler illustration, you have to really give everything and leave everything behind totally without reservations without conditions lord i'm going to follow you i'm going to surrender 99 and i'm just going to keep one can i still follow you lord no way following the lord is turning away from your sin that is without condition, without reservation. So if we are in the ministry and having a desire to really serve God, we have to turn away, turn our back to those sin and start facing God. Now, I am not saying, brothers and sisters, that hindi na po tayo magkakasala. No, I'm not talking about a perfect life. That we are not going to sin anymore. Because we will always do. Okay? In this life and in this world, we are going to fight against sin. But what I am saying is that there should be what? 
there should be a struggle. Hindi po yung katulad ng dati. Okay? So kapag dinignan mo po yung alak, hindi mo na kayang inumin to. I, have, I cannot. I cannot taste this. Or ang sigarilyo, I cannot taste this. Or yung company, bad companies, I won't. I won't do the same thing that what they are doing or what I am doing before. You have to really turn away from it if you want to serve God. There's no options on it. That is the only way in order for us to serve Him. If we are truly repentant, brothers and sisters, and if we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord of our life, for sure, we are been forgiven. We could have been saved and have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. And along with this is the Holy Spirit indwelling in each and every one of us. Diba? So lahat po ng mga iyon. Then those will be the result that you are now having a struggle in sinning. You are now going to have a struggle in those old life that you have. Of course, Satan will still pull you back from this direction. But what you're going to focus on and to continue to focus on to the Lord. Diba? Kaya nga yung mga, yung mga analogy that we are really to look unto Jesus alone. Diba? The author and finisher of our faith. So whenever there is a temptation behind us, really trying to turn us back before the Lord, you have, we have to be intentional on this you are really going to throw it away. Amen po? Let me tell you this uh, very straight. True repentance is a total turning of your inner man from sin and walk to God and walk with God. It's a total change in our inner man. So whenever we are having some friends or companies that pulling us back. We have to be clear that we have to be intention that we have turned our back already on that. And I am now walking before the Lord. That is true repentance. If God calls sinner for repentance, how much more his dear children? Application po sa atin mga Kristiyano. When God is really calling and how serious God is really calling the sinners into repentance, how much more His dear children that He would encourage. Kaya nga po tayo that we could come now unto the Lord and we could ask for forgiveness. Whenever we have committed sin, we are to ask and come unto the Lord and ask for forgiveness. Why? Because God is going to open the doors of grace and forgiveness and favor and blessings that have been stored, naihinder lang po yun because of those sins that is in us, na ayaw pa nating talikuran. Everyone who comes to Him will be blessed abundantly and beyond our imagination. Now, I'm not talking again here a financial blessing, a material blessing. I'm talking about here really something that is far beyond beautiful that we could imagine. How the Lord has turned us how the Lord has removed those guilt into our heart, into our mind, and bring us and gives us joy and peace. Diba? Mas maganda po yun than those material things. And how much more what God had stored for us in heaven that nothing in this world would be able to compare. Those were the blessings that God is giving unto each and every one of us, His dear children. So kapag tayo po nagkasala sa Panginoon that we committed sin against Him and to Him alone, we should ask for forgiveness. We should come to Him and we have to be intention, intentional. Lord, sorry po ha. Tapos lakad ka na ulit, balik ka ulit. Lord, sorry ulit. Habitual na po yun. Mali na rin po yun. Lord, promise mo, papatawarin mo ako if I ask for forgiveness. <laughs> Di ba? 
So those were abused, brothers and sisters. And let us now move to number four, and this is going to be the last. True repentance follows Christ. True repentance is not a temporary turning and following Christ because we are in a situation that is difficult, that are rough. You know, whenever there is a sickness or whenever we are in need of job and we are really having this trouble in regards to our family, ano pong ginagawa natin? We are, okay, Lord, susunod pa ako sa inyo ngayon na temporary following the Lord. Naalala niyo po ba nung before kayo nagkatrabaho and you really are other people I mean, if it is not really you. Okay? As human beings as we are, we tend like this. If we are really going through some difficult situations, God just help me and I promise that I'm not going to do this anymore, Lord. Lord promise, hindi ko na talaga gagawin ito. Brothers, even before you promise, God already knows before and after of you. <laughs> so does it not, that doesn't make any sense at all. Di ba? Sasama ka pa sa lagi, every Sunday, nandito ka, prayer meeting, habang naghahanap pa ng trabaho. Lord, bigyan niyo lang po ako ng trabaho. I'm really going to serve you. I'm really going to Lord to, to follow you. Di ba? Ganun naman talaga ang tao, whenever they are going through a storm, they will sing amazing grace. Tingnan yung paglampas ng storm, ano nang kinakanta? That's the same thing with us. It takes a temporary following or turning of following Christ. But that is not a true repentance, brothers and sisters. True repentance really is turning away and really dedicated to follow Christ. Siguro may mga naalala kayo. O nga, no, kasama pa namin siya sa Bible study, sipag-sipag niya pa noon, di ba? Noong nagkatrabaho na, nasaan na siya? Nasaan na kayo? <laughs> di ba po? Luke 13 verse 3, this is the last verse, I believe. It says here, I tell you, no, when God is conversing, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. So there is only two things here. Either you repent or you perish. It's the same thing with true repentance. When you come unto the Lord, yes or no, it's just two. There is no halfway, there is no in-between, or there is no alibi, Lord, later. There is just true repent or perish. Unless you repent, you too will perish. Sabi ng Panginoong Yesus. So there is only this option. Either we follow Christ or we walk away from Him. And here is the reality of it. True repentance is following Christ alone. There is nothing, there, is, there should be nothing in our heart, in our life that can compete with Christ. Wala po dapat siyang kakompetensya. Yung ating Sunday service, there should be no competence, di ba? Pagdating sa Panginoon, ay maglalaba ako. Ah, wag naman yung mga laba-laba lang, baka pagalitan tayo ni Mami Julie. Di ba? Laba-laba lang yan, di ba? So, wag naman ganun. No? Yung Tuesday service natin. Whenever we are following the Lord, nothing should compete in between. Di ba? Wala pong dapat makakapagalang. So, ibig sabihin, in relations to our marriage, to our spouse, to our family, Christ should be the first. In relation to our work, Christ should be the first. In relation to our friends, niyaya ka. Pasyal tayo sa ano? Sa expo. <laughs> eh, may service. Sige lang, okay lang yun. Hindi tayo mapapansin ni Pastor. Marami naman kami. <laughs> Marami naman sila sa church. Uh-uh. 
O nga, totoo, hindi ko kayo mapapansin, but the Lord really notice you. <laughs> And tandaan niyo po yung mga katabi niyo, kasi permanent seat na po nila yan, so usually, Sister Che, nandyan siya lagi. <laughs> tandaan niyo, pag may nawala dyan, no? Ako, si Mrs. wala dyan, ano? So, yun po. So, tingnan po natin. Ha? Permanent body, Richard. Bro, umiikot ka minsan. <laughs> So, tandaan po natin, we are to be accountable to one another. So, ibig sabihin po, when we are really dedicated to follow the Lord, nothing should come in between our dedications to Him, even in our ministry. Hindi po ibig sabihin, dahil mayroon kayong practice, then you are now stopping the way you are reading and having your devotions. Di ba? Eh kasi may emergency kami na practice, di ba? May emergency kaming gagawin. Continue what you are doing. Pray. Diba? Nothing should go in between. And even in everything that we dearly love, everything should come under Christ. Should influence Christ. Ayun po yung pinaka-circle doon. And you know, as to close this, to repentance, brothers and sisters, when it comes to following the Lord Jesus Christ, That includes yourself. Not only okay, yung ministry, yung work, even brothers and sisters, your very own life. Because in essence, ito po yung gusto nating sabihin dito. True repentance is turning away from your sin. It is really turning away from yourself. And focus to God alone. Amen po. Let us call our praise and worship team. And we are now going to have our closing prayer. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we thank you and we honor you and we praise you. Thank you so much once again, O oh God, for meeting us, enabling us, Lord God, to understand the very central message that you have been preaching. For your people to repent for the kingdom, Lord, of heaven is near. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful church. Thank you so much for everyone who are here today. And it's our prayer, Lord, that as we have learned, that we will continue, Lord God, to follow you and to turn unto you. That we could continue, O oh God, to give glory to your name alone. We should, Lord God, see the big picture of it. Nothing would hinder us, even our problems. Nothing would hinder any, even any kind of situations or circumstances into our life in serving you. Father, we thank you and we honor you, God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us raise our hand for the benediction. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you true and true. And may your Holy Spirit, your soul and body, be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The service is ended. You may go in peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.